Hi, my name is Audrey Taylor, and I would like to introduce you to William Chandler Bagley, uh, an American who has done wonderful things for our educational community. Uh, I'd like to ask you a few questions first. Uh, do you think that everyone should have the opportunity to receive a quality education? Do you think there's room for improvement in our public education? And do you think a moderate and conservative approach is a good one when it comes to educating our children? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you can appreciate William Bagley and the contributions that he has made. Um, I'd like to begin with a brief life sketch. As you can see, um, he was an accomplished man. He uh, was born in Detroit, Michigan in 1847. Um, he moved around a little bit. His dad was a hospital superintendent, so they lived in Massachusetts for a time. But he did come back to Detroit, and that's where he graduated from high school. He went on to Michigan Agricultural College. He wanted to be a farmer. Well, he graduated with no success finding employment, little money, and no land. So farming was not happening for William. He knew he needed to provide for himself, so he accepted a a teaching position in a one-room schoolhouse in Grant, Michigan. And it was here in Grant that he realized he had a passion for education. So upon completing that one-year contract, he took out a loan and he went to earn his master's degree. And he earned it from the University of Wisconsin. Uh, he went right into his PhD uh, at Cornell University. He studied psychology under uh, Edward Titchener, who was a renowned psychologist at the time, and William's mentor. Upon earning his PhD, he had the opportunity to serve as a principal in St. Louis, Missouri. The following year, he accepted a position and moved to Dillon, Montana to be a professor of psychology and pedagogy in the State Normal College. Uh, it was here that he founded the Intermountain Educator. Um, this was a magazine devoted to educators and education, the first one of its kind in the state. Uh, he also wrote his first book here. And this book was called The Educative Process. It was a comprehensive portrayal of an early science of education. The work became a popular textbook throughout the United States for courses on introduction to educational psychology. It was well received here, but also received national acclaim. And this was probably one of the first things that brought attention to William Bagley in his career. Uh, in 1909, he accepted a position as professor and director of School of Education at the University of Illinois. Um, here, he did such remarkable things with the Department of Education that it became the most well-known in the nation. Uh, in the nine years he was on the Illinois faculty, Bagley attracted to Illinois many prominent educational scholars. Uh, from here, he accepted a position um, at Columbia University, the teacher's college there. And this is where he remained for well over 20 years. This is the position he retired from. Uh, and he, wow, he got to work with some phenomenal people. Uh, included on the faculty were men such as John Dewey, a prominent scholar, Edward Thorndike, William Hurd Kilpatrick, and George Strayer. Uh, it was here that he entered into some of his most heated debates on the psychology of education. Uh, he did retire in 1939, uh, but he kept editing and became editor of the School and Society and he was still doing that when he passed away on July 1st, 1946, at age 72. Now, while he was working at Columbia University, this is where um, essentialism really came to be. He was very conflicted about this approach. Progressive education was taking hold, and so Bagley felt the need to counteract that. And this happened in the 30s. He and um, some of his colleagues, they were critical of Kilpatrick's work. They felt that he had misinterpreted John Dewey's um, 
And so Bagley himself was both a supporter and a critic of, of Dewey's progressive education, believing that progressive education and pragmatism have their advantages, but that overall they have a negative effect on the educational level of society. Uh, Bagley felt that education was becoming watered down. Um, he opposed all types of extremism. He held that a balanced approach to education is needed, one that takes into account all aspects of education from all schools of philosophy. So the essentialist platform essentially recognized the right of an immature student uh, to have the guidance of a well-educated, caring, and cultured teacher. Second, they proposed that an effective democracy demanded a democratic culture in which teachers impart the ideals of community to each succeeding generation of children. And third, they called for a specific program of studies that required thoroughness, accuracy, persistence, and good workmanship on the part of the students. So, Bagley believed we needed languages, reading, writing, arithmetic, science, history. Uh, these were valuable and would uh, help foster a generation that would contribute and, and improve society. That was very important. Uh, throughout his career, Bagley worked to professionalize teachers' professions and to design more effective methods of teachers' education. Uh, he wrote, authored, and co-authored um, more than 30 books, and he authored 400 um, journal, journal articles and editorials. Uh, he was very passionate about education, and he knew that to have the greatest effect that he needed to influence from the top down. So he was teaching teachers, he was educating educators, as opposed to focusing in one classroom. Uh, this method definitely influenced me. Uh, as a student in Ontario, Canada, there were no fluff courses. It was all core curriculum with perhaps a couple of electives in high school that would fall outside of those. And do you know what? It was a wonderful education that prepared me uh, for for college, university, and it was a wonderful transition. Um, William was a conservative educational philosopher who lived and worked during the Progressive Era. He regarded both philosophical views on education, progressive and conservative, as having valid points that needed to be taken into account when applying educational philosophy to the curriculum. He opposed extreme viewpoints in educational theory and rejected the idea that only one educational theory can assess all issues in education. He advocated a moderate, balanced approach to education.